Hi, everybody. I'm Julie Loosebrock, and I'm the SVP of HR for Deluxe Corporation. We are a 100-year-old check printing company who has, in the last seven, eight years, been on a massive transformation to transform from check printing and printed product into technology services. So as you think about that, and you think about the kind of change that that, that implies, we were really um, right at the precipice of really needing to look at different ways that we encourage our leaders to think differently and our culture to change. So we were fortunate to connect with the Neuroleadership Institute and the kinds of things that we are doing, um, first and foremost, one of our, our foundations is how do we increase the quality of the conversations that our managers are having with our employees? And you might go, well, that seems simple, but you know what? A lot of times in our organizations, managers don't talk to their employees, right? So we said, what is a quality conversation? Had to define that and worked with Neuroleadership Institute to really create a program that we call Connect for Results. And that's a program that at our high level leaders, maybe our most senior leaders, it's a five week high um, model. It's a, a interactive virtual program where they spend time really understanding how do I have that quality conversation? How do I improve thinking to improve performance? How do I not just tell, but I dialogue to improve insights? From that program, we took snippets of that and created a more 90-minute two-module program called Setting the Stage for Quality Conversation, and we moved that down to the next level, um, mid-level leaders, so that we could roll that out in the entirety of the organization mm -hmm. so that we begin to have a common vocabulary with some of those same concepts. A lot of this is all hinged upon SCARF, and so we also license the SCARF model, and we do programs on SCARF. We also incorporate all of those concepts into all of our other leader development so that it's not always one-offs, but that we are integrating things. Additionally, what we have done is we just recently rolled out Decide. So the bias program and the seeds model within our organization. And so as we look at this, it's really about how do we have quality conversations? How do we um, have mm. insights occur? How do people dialogue with one another that help them think differently about the way they do their work and really thinking differently about the way that our organization moves forward? That's great. Thanks, Julie. How, how many people in the organization, how many people oh have been gosh. impacted so far? Well, so we're a mid-sized company. We have about 5,800 employees. And so I'd say in the, in the um, Connect for Results, we have probably our top uh, about 150 of our leaders have gone through that in setting the stage for quality conversations. There's probably a couple of hundred that have gone through that. And then it has impacted almost virtually everybody because those leaders are using it in dialogue that they're having with their employees. Leaders came to us like in our HR, you know, as we're consulting with them, talking about how do we deal with this employee situation or this, or how can I make this employee react to me better? And when you can start consulting with them around, let's talk about how you show up mm -hmm. and let's talk about experiences you've had when you've been meeting with your boss and how you felt and you start to anchor it in some of that scarf stuff and that scarf piece is so sticky they start to become more self-aware and go wow yeah when that happened to me this is how I felt so now they start processing that to say when I go talk to my employee I think I'm gonna be more aware of this I'm going to do this different. I'm going to pay some more attentional control and see what's happening. And then when you root it in that science again, you start talking and consult with them on kind of the business problem they're trying to solve or what they're trying to do with their employees. And they came at it first from a selfish perspective. Now they're being more self-aware and reflective and then seeing how that impacts and having more of a connection. And I will tell you that I have seen relationships um, and connections between leaders and those that they could not mentor or connect with or have a conversation with, very different. And one last thing additionally, and this was a surprising thing, at Deluxe, some of the leaders that take to this the most are my finance and tax leaders. <laughs> and I go, what? 
uh, what, what's up with that, right? But what they come to you for is they're saying, how do we deal with all this emotion stuff? And I know I can't do this well, so can you give me some guidance? And then you start to tell them about the science, so logically it fits, and then they go, okay, I want some of that because I want to do that better. It's right. like a growth mindset, right? I think I can get better at this. So that was a surprising thing. It was those leaders that didn't felt that, feel that they were equipped to do this really gravitated to it more. That deluxe, we really, in our leadership development, talk a lot about the inner game impacting the outer game. And the self-regulation and the emotional regulation components of a lot of the, the work that we've done with you has really helped because as leaders begin to think about what am I doing that might be thwarting improved thinking and improved performance and really looking at self and going, how am I showing up? What's the experience and understanding that? We've seen that be powerful because they're first looking at this and going, you know what, I could be part of the issue. Now how do I reframe and reappraise and now connect with you in a different way so that I can ask you questions, let you start to think, and you have your own insights so that performance is improved and the whole company um, benefits from that.